Hey everybody, it is Addison Bell and Kendall Williams, and we've decided that Addison needs a touch screen computer. I don't like my computer. No, she needs a touch screen because I keep trying to touch her screen and it does nothing. And she just me. leaves Kendall sized fingerprints <laughs> on yes. my screen. Yes, so that doesn't appreciate it. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so today's topic <laughs> is exposing your inner child. And I think earlier we sent an email out saying embracing your inner child, which is kind of also what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about just our inner children. And if you saw the promo for this, we had both our cute little younger child faces on the promo. So, so yeah, we decided today, because it keeps coming up in with a lot of clients, and I know that I was doing some inner child work um, like a month or so ago, and and I think I have seen it coming up again and again, and so I figured let's just talk about it. And so mm -hmm. I'm also wearing my Alice in Wonderland shirt. Does it see that? We're all mad here. Oh, yes, she's more mad than me. She's got Beetlejuice on. Let's say it three times. Beetlejuice. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're a dorky today. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. So, yeah, so, inner, well, you've had it come up with clients, and yes. you were doing inner child work. I have, I think that we're always doing inner child yes. work. You know, Addison's great at quotes, and she has a whole page of them. Um, but as I was reading through the quotes and everything, the, the one that captured me the most is Paulo Coelho. We have to listen to the child we once were, the child who still exists inside us. The child, that child understands magic moments. We can stifle its cries, but we cannot stifle its voice. The child we once were is still there. And out of all the quotes on here, they're all fantastic. But that quote, I guess, is because, because I teach so much on abundance and creativity and openness and getting into that flow Play. and it's not about you know I always I've been making a statement lately about honesty will get you nowhere mm -hmm. and that is that like having that logical mind of just being right well this is what is and then you get stuck in that well that's not honoring your inner child at all the inner child is actually a beautiful beautiful resource for creation work for you know creating that life that we want that manifestation but that means tapping into creativity, visionary, play, play. <laughs> right? You know, that magical world that, that so many of us adults tend to want to stay clear of because it's not logical. It's not that area that makes a whole lot of sense to us. No. It's, you know, we're, we're not being very responsible when we're being playful, when we're being, you know, overly adventurous or even you know, trying to stimulate the imagination with different things. That's, none of that is logical work. We should just put our head down and... Get realistic. Get realistic. Get Start rich. planning. Yes. You know, you can't have everything you want. Exactly. You can't. Money doesn't grow on trees. Money doesn't grow on trees. You yeah. just need to grow up already. You just need to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. How many times do you have to learn this lesson over and over again? Just like you're just don't give up. You need to just, you're too much. Yeah. You're too much. <laughs> but you're not enough. You're not enough. Yeah. I mean, these are all things we learn as children, and we we really do kind of soak them in, and we, we soak in that play isn't okay. And actually, it's sad because I see it more and more. I mean, I, I see... I used to work with children a whole lot. I, I taught dance, and I, I worked with a lot of kids for a long time. And I see it actually getting worse the older we get, or, or the older I get, and the, the more we get very focused on education, we've lost, like, the play. Like, kindergartners are having, like, panic attacks because they're, they're under so because much recess pressure. recess has been taken out of school for the most part. Yeah, and they, they have they have like hours of homework instead of you know, when I was a kid it was like half day kindergarten and went home and played played because the work of children is play and not to kind of get into like societal issues here, but it really is well yes kinda. But we lose that play and we're being told earlier and earlier, I think, to get rid of that play and so I think that 
as adults to go like, oh, no, I'm just going to go play, their almost shame comes up. And we, and then when our inner child does come up, because just like Paolo says, like, that child is within us. When that comes up, we get, we shame ourselves, we shut down, we shut that piece off and both from our our wounds that need healed because we all have wounds that need to be healed from childhood and also from the play aspect of things because there there are two very opposite things we need to really focus in on with our inner child we need to focus in on the play and the fun and the enjoyment but we also need to focus in on those pieces of us that were, um, I don't like the word wounded, but it's the best word I can kind of come up with, but like that wounding piece, so. Well, those components, if you don't pay attention to those those two components, then what ends up happening is you're an adult that's living in bitterness and frustration, you know, mm -hmm. how many, so, we're, how many years apart? Nine. Nine years apart, okay. <laughs> Horrible at math. Okay. So we're nine years apart. So we got 30s and we got 40s. And how many people in between our age bracket of those nine years are on at least five antidepressants? Oh, most of most of the United States, not even adults. Most, most well, of the United States, yeah, just adults. within us. Just between our, call it a 10-year age would say, bracket. I would say that, uh, and I don't have statistics, so please don't. Row statistics at me that you're wrong, Madison, later in the comments. But I would say probably 75% of adults have had in their, between our ages, have some form of antidepressant, anti-anxiety, anti-something going on in yep. med, yep. going into their system. There is something, they, the majority of people have been prescribed at least one drug, and then of course, then there's the supportive drugs to help offset all those wonderful side effects, which yes. is what they were there to help get rid of anyway. But that's a whole other big pharmaceutical discussion that we're not going to go into. Yeah. But not the point there is is that that is a lot of trying to squish that inner child and not get into dealing with the wounding, mm -hmm. do the healing practices, actually have self love, self care practices be playful, be, you know, just allow yourself to be turned on. We are told that unless we are just like this, just maintaining, 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 that that's the only thing that's really allowed. If somebody is overly happy or God forbid they feel sadness, something bad happens and they get sad about it or they get upset about it. Oh my goodness. That's not okay. It really isn't. We are, we live in a society anymore where the natural human emotional scale of emotions, is just Yes, it's not allowed. And here's the thing. You should have the emotional scale of a teaspoon. The emotional scale of a teaspoon, and we put this on our children in today's world. Yeah, we do. I mean, having, I've got kids, I've got you know, a little one that will be entering kindergarten next year. I've got a son that's graduating high school this year. I've been through lots of, all the years, about 20 years of parenting in school-aged children. And over the course of that time, I've literally watched this pressure increase and it been created more and more to the point that by the time you're 18, you need to have all your shit mm -hmm. figured out. You've got to know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. You need to have ex you know, I'm like, I don't even trust this person to vote. You know, I don't want them behind the wheel we of my car. car. And I, I'm like, I just got comfortable with the, like, okay, you can oversee this, you can oversee that. But making major life decisions when their frontal lobe is not even developed, which guess what the frontal lobe does? It's the place of logic and reason, okay? Which technically it's not even developed till almost 30 years old. Yes, yes. But you got to have like a lot of 27, 28. Yeah. But, yeah. But at age 18, it is super not developed. You're supposed to be all wise, all knowing, and have everything figured out. You didn't have all your shit figured out at 18? What is wrong with you? I know. I know. It took me till I was I thought I, I thought I had all my shit figured out. And then I got to be like 25 and I went, oh, maybe I don't. Exactly. Let's just change our whole life. Like. Exactly. By the time I was 30, 31, that's where I um, really settled into knowing what I wanted because I knew myself more than. Yes. Up until then, I did not have a freaking clue 
about anything. It was more of self-discovery. I was blessed with non-normal parents. <laughs> non-normal parents. Not I was blessed with very normal parents. So, so yeah. So I had that that viewpoint of that I could go and make these changes. That my life, what I didn't have to have my shit in order by the time I was eighteen. I was a fantastic student. Graduated high mm -hmm. school two years early. Great grades. Did all. I had all these big plans, and then I got to eighteen, and I hit what's it called senior. Senioritis. Senioritis, even though I wasn't a senior because I was out of school already two years. But at 18, I just went, ah, I don't want anything to do with this life. And I completely just derailed everything and went a, went a direction that, looking back, the me of 40 just says, no, I, I, I shouldn't have done that. But that's the logical me, right? Then it was just I needed to go and explore and experience and do whatever that was and what I see happening in today's world like with my 18 year old son is that the pressure is so intense that he's he's got himself in this anxiety wrapped up where he's now got sleeping issues he's he's not exercising the way he and his is a boy that he exercises faithfully but he's not doing his exercise actually quit his job because he's trying to make sure that his schooling is completely taken care of even though all the stuff that he's trying to pass in school has nothing to do with anything that he wants for his life. Mm -hmm. And he lost all the play in his life. All yeah. the play. He's not doing anything that he actually enjoys doing for the most part. I mean, like 80% of his play is gone because he's like, Mom, you just don't understand. I have to have this put together. I have to have that. And I'm like, take the next two years off and go travel the world, honey. Like, go do, mm -hmm. like, go, go do this, go do that. And he's like, oh, I can't. Everybody's telling me I have to have this. I'm like, Seriously, when you're 20, and when you're 40, it's you're going to want something completely different when you're 40 than when you're 20. Yes. I, I completely agree. And I think that, I mean, play is so important. And really, what a better time to play when, you're, when you don't know, when you really don't know what you want. I mean, because you're right. But, you know, at 40, I, I haven't hit 40 yet. But I hope to, you know, at 30, I'm more knowledgeable of what I want. Than I was at twenty, and so what a better, better, As you get better older, time you have to wiser play. play. Yes, you have wiser, wiser play. play. But, but go learn you. Yeah, and go so, so yeah, I think we squash that play, and then we continue to squash it throughout our life, and we never, we never find it. And then along with that play, we also squash those parts of us that that might need healed. But I do want to be like cautious with this because. I do think there are people who get overly focused on, like, heal your inner child. Just talk to your inner child. And I think there are times when, like, there's times when I'll be like, okay, like, that is my five-year-old. Like, I see, like, that is my five-year-old coming out. And I'll even say that to myself, like, okay, this is, this is, this is Allison of 10. You know, I notice where, because I know where some of my wounding happened, where some of my, my stuff comes from because we all have this stuff uh if you say you don't then you might need to go do some inner child work. i have no inner child issues okay <laughs> okay completely <laughs> kidding uh, <laughs> probably not right before you we the started bus. this right before we started this live i was going through some inner child issues so and your inner child triggered my inner child <laughs> Because we do have, well, now technically thing. speaking, your inner child triggered my inner child, which we triggered my. Okay. Just kidding. Okay. Anyway. But who's keeping tabs anyway, right? I am. Yes. <laughs> inner child. <laughs> but it, it, really, we, we have these pieces of us that we need to acknowledge. We need to see. We need to go, okay, I see where that came from. Because if we don't do any exploration of like where this came from, then then I think we are missing some vital information. But at the same time, not getting stuck in that because then we get if we get into stuck victim. in it, then it is it's the victim and because fresh. it's it's kind of like it's kind of like if if you over baby a child, you know you over. You, give them everything that they want. So you're constantly, they fall down and you're like, oh, 
before they ever hit the ground. Then the child's crying even more. It's a bigger drama, all this different stuff. Or they never get told no. They never get told this. They never get told that. If we over baby our inner child, then in essence, we're kind of creating. Then we become the inner We become the inner child. Right, because then Not we in go a good into, way. and that's that victim mode of like, well, you know, it's got to be my way or no way. And there is a place that you have to go, okay, this is my child. And I get to choose, I get to choose to be the adult right now. So like a, this is a stupid example. I'm going to pick on one of your children because I don't have any children. Go for it. But like I was, so I was over a couple days ago and you, your youngest wanted M&M's. And you were like, no, you cannot, like, you're cut off. Your M&M cut off. Like, you had enough. And he just. We're potty training. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, he was upset. Well, if you did that as an adult and you're like, well, no, I want M&M's. Now I want M&M's for dinner. Now I want m like. Okay, but you're also going to have a heart attack, and you're going to have diabetes, and you're going to you're going to have all this stuff. So there does come a point where our adult self, which is what we all are, has to step in and go, "Okay, I see that. I acknowledge that that is where that's coming from." But I'm going to I'm also going to choose to do this over here. I'm going to choose to make the adult choice. Um, I'm going to choose to see it and, and then go and do the work that I need to do to heal that shit because I'm not five. I'm not 10. I'm not whatever age. Yeah. And that is right down to learning where you say no to yourself, learning where you need to say yes to yourself. It's the wisdom of choice versus just being reactive and it's fun. Spontaneity is wonderful, but childlike spontaneity sometimes can work against you because of that right there. Otherwise, yeah, we'd be eating bags and bags of yes. M&Ms, never drinking our water, not getting, not doing the, you know, it's like in today's world, what would children be doing? They'd be ordering pizza and Playing on the games. PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch 24 seven, and they would never come out of their dark room. They wouldn't take a shower. They wouldn't brush their teeth, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that's that, that mode of the unhealthy inner child. And we get stuck in that yes. frequently as adults because those are those things that inner child who does not want to go and do and, and, and to take care of self because they're so focused in on this is the most comfortable the pleasure. Thing, yeah. right? the pleasure. Over pleasure. The pleasure that is so comfortable that you just like, yes, I'm just never going to leave this. And then they end up never leaving quite literally that childlike state so it's like no in those moments get your butt up and go to the gym go take eat you know go get some sunshine go do this go do that so but it yeah. is stepping into that childlike wonderment too at times too allowing yourself to dream allowing your, so it is a harmony okay. we don't like the word balance here on free spirit talks <laughs> so we'll use it for yeah, harmony no, but it is like finding that harmony of because there are times that it's okay to go like no, I'm gonna have, my dinner is gonna be dessert because like that's what I do. That's where I'm on a trip. We're gonna like that looks really yummy. I'm not super hungry, so we're gonna just go for that. Like that's okay sometimes, but sometimes that's okay. You know, and then that wonderment of like no, I do like I. In, in getting out of that reality picture of kind of manifestation of like, for example, like there's a, a trip I want to go on and I'm like, instead of going into my re reality and going like, okay, so this is like, is this going to work? And then I have to move this around and then like, okay, can I get that, that amount of money by the going like, no, like I, I'm going to go dream. I'm going to go like, look at pictures. I'm going to like that wonderment that like child, like, feel is important in creating the life we want. It gets the juices flowing. It gets yes. that, that vibe out there and with, with me, those people are um. <laughs> Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> the shoulder tears is like, no, we're gonna be right here. <laughs> but no, Expose. I mean that's <laughs> we're talking about exposing our inner child, not it's not my yourself. shoulder. Not exposing okay. yourself. Just on Facebook Live. I, I'm sure there would be some people who would love that, but we're not going there today. Not, not in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be another one. <laughs>
<laughs> another episode. But no, that that childlike wonder, that enthusiasm, you know, like so, like taking the trip and going. Yeah. I mean, you and I were just looking at Costa Rica pictures. Well, that's, we're looking that, at yeah, that's we're looking at going to Costa Rica for her birthday. So, girls' trip to Costa Rica. So, how do you make that happen? How it, it's you got to get that creative juices flowing. Okay. So it's like, what do we want to do? Let's go check out the excursions. Let's go check out the different destinations. Where could we stay? What's our options? You know, all this different stuff. And I'm, I'm and getting playful, about right? It. Getting playful about it. I love. I mean, like half the stuff that I create in life. And in my work is based on a trip, quite literally, because I love to travel. So if you looked at my like my personal plans for the year, she sees most I think it's amazing. I, I think it's awesome. I'm going here. I'm going there. It inspires I'm going here. Me. I'm going there. And and then I just work my butt off, but in a more playful, jazzed up way because I have this creative, fun thing that I'm working towards. And it do, it just makes life more enjoyable the experience because that's all we ever have is the experience of the now mm -hmm. but if the now is just like ugh, that's that you know you're just dreading every single moment then that's that's that logical adult mind that says you know you have to you have to do this which makes me think of years ago this was probably like 11 oh, I guess it, yeah 11 12 years ago Levi was a baby and he's now 12 so it was 11 12 years ago I remember my father-in-law coming up to the door and we were going through some tremendous financial issues and we were looking at moving and here I was five kids and, and basically it, it, it really sucked. It did. It sucked. But I remember my father-in-law coming up to the door and he, we had some conversation and the end of the conversation, he made this statement to me and I wanted to hit him in the moment and and it's like one of those statements that just has stuck with me. And his statement was, when you have children, when you have a family, you can't just go do what you want to do. You have to, you have to put a, to the oh. side everything that you want and you have to make sure that everything for them is taken care of. Yes. Now, I understand the point that he's making. You have to be, you need responsible. to be responsible. You need to make sure that all means are taken care of, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, you're acting in irresponsible mm -hmm. inner child format but with that if you completely lock it down to just duty thinking that responsibility duty thinking life loses its luster yes. it loses everything and then you're on five antidepressants and all this different stuff and you just don't want to get up in the morning and you stop caring about yourself and you stop doing this and you stop doing that and it's just like I just got to do this I got to do that and guess what the as in that mode right there, you can have you can be making a ton of money and you'll never have enough mm -hmm. because you're always going to just be caught on this right here. That is, it. and if you and, and you may not ever make enough money. I mean, it's just quite literally it. You may never have enough time. You may never have enough energy. Your physical body is going to start to just waste away. Basically, yes. all this different stuff. Where having that playfulness, and that's what it really is. I know that that's kind of like where we come at that exposing like, your inner child really is more about exposing playfulness. your playfulness, exposing your adventure for life. Yeah. There's a, it, so it's, it's a common like meme question. It's not, there's no actual author, but it's like, can you remember who you were before the world told you who you were, who you were to be? Because I think that is the playfulness, like thinking of yourself, like when you were little, like, like what, what does juice you up? What did I know, like, the same things aren't probably going to exactly juicy up that did when maybe you were, like, four. But, I mean, they might. <laughs> I wanted to create a circus when I was a kid one time. Which you have been able to successfully complete as an adult. But I made this you, great you, big poster. Uh, Britney Spears I... Circus just totally went through my head. <laughs> Oh my goodness, now all of a sudden I hear the circus music. <laughs> all right, that was not needed. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, really, like, it, it, like the things that juiced you up when you were little, I, we were told, so often you're told, like, oh, stop that. Like, even as, like, adult or teenagers, I know, so I actually started, like, college as a dance major. I was going to be a dance major, and I heard from so many people that that was irresponsible and that's playful and that's childish 
and I know artists that get the same thing. Anything that has a sense of play, we as society do not value it. Shut it down. We shut it down. We do not value it. Uh, and then we do the same thing with with any of like that child and, and again use the word wounding. I don't like the word wounding, but it, it, again, it's the only thing that's like coming to mind. But like the child and childish wounding, we do the same thing. We we just like suppress all of it, the play and the and the wounding, and we end up doing more harm. I actually have an article coming out tomorrow. It's just it's ready. It just needs to get published. Um, but it is about. It, it's about like w our wounding and how it comes up. So acknowledging it, seeing it, because often if we run from it, what ends up happening is we we ruin relationships. We end up we end up acting from ego because that's exactly what ends up happening. We we our inner child is our ego too, and we end up like reacting, and then also. And we still might react and still might have that moment, but then to go back and go like, I'm really sorry, like this is what was happening, can, can be helpful in a relationship. It can be helpful in a, in, to yourself to just see, okay, well, I see that. Let me not continue to, to go down that childish path or to, to align with my ego, basically, in that state. Um, so that is my wise words. <laughs> it's your wise words? It's my wise, wise words. Um, was another? Because there, so, an, okay. kind of an example almost, and I'll throw myself under the bus, there was a couple weeks ago, and I had, <laughs> someone moved. Sorry, I just heard the bus one. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, it's backing up. Oh, it's backing up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did circus music. I got the best. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> but, so, I had a, I had a, I don't want to call it disagreement. It was a disagreement with somebody. But I don't, so I get really, my child, one of my childing, childish wounding is that I feel like I always am wrong. No matter if I am wrong or not wrong, I feel like I'm wrong. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I get really upset with myself. And it is seeing that and going like, okay, I see the, the, the child part of me right there and going like, okay, I see where I totally just dropped into being like a 10 year old mm -hmm. in that state because of what I, I, we, what we learn as we get older is, I mean, we do kind of build our own home lack of better word. Right? Like we, we it's layers. We we build layers of ourselves up and to go, okay, I see that layer. I see that layer that isn't able to go, no, you know, here is what I actually felt and here's here I might still be sorry, but here is what, what was going on for me. Um that is a childhood wound and that's something for me to recognize when it happens. And I've done a whole lot of work on that and I and way I do I feel like I, I'm much better at it than I used to be but it is recognizing where those wounds are because especially when we are in uh, very ego kind of driven places you'll see them come up more and more so yeah you know, when we get us. very reactive to things then all of a sudden that's anyways. yeah because that's that child that comes up and will just completely you know the, the ego is going to Lash out and be. That's my ball. I'm going home. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> anybody in that child like. It's my ball. I'm taking it and I'm going home. Okay, you know, and that's that. And you run away with your ball and, and that's that. But that's that reactive mode. And and all of a sudden, I know what you're laughing about. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Thank you for driving over my bus. She just totally took my childhood wounding place and was like. Oh, let me just back over that shit. <laughs> the building <laughs> personality. Yes, I agree, Kat. Uh, we do begin to build our, our personalities, you know, from the time we're born and, and before that. So it is a layers, I think. There has so, been a lot of, actually a lot of um, science done about that even when a baby is 
oh my goodness, all of a sudden construction in the office. Um, that when a baby is in the womb, the different emotions that the mother is going through. So like if the relationship between the mother and the father is abusive, that mm -hmm. that's going to play an impact on the child's upbringing. If, you know, if they're in a very loving situation, then that's the person's going to, their personality is going to be calm or state, all the different stuff. What the mom is going through and where she's at hormonally and emotionally, mentally speaking, plays a role on the child's personality. Yes. And then that first five to seven years is the most significant portion of a child's life. And that personality gets built up from exactly what, what they're, you know, they're learning, they're seeing, they're experiencing. And if you take it to a more spiritual context, you could pull in that personality comes from multiple lifetimes yeah. even. Spirit, so you could, you could, past lives. right. You could go into that whole spectrum there and say that, you know, that stuff could play a role as well. But I think just, if you just keep it in this lifetime, it has been proven that from the moments of, that even when, how a child is conceived plays a role on energy. Yeah. Energy going into it. That can play a role on a child. So, I mean, I agree. Again, I'm just going to, this is going to be the action throwing yourself under the bus train. Hold on. I'm going to get secure. <laughs> Get secure. All right. <laughs> no, but like, so I, when I was born, I was actually, I spent a whole month in the hospital by myself. My parents couldn't touch me. They couldn't, I, I, I spent uh, the first month of my life in an incubator. And then the whole first year of my life, I had a, a I had some physical stuff. So I had a, a monitor on me where people really couldn't hold me. Like, so lack I, of touch. Yes. But I, and so I ended up having, I had to work through a lot of abandonment stuff that I was going like, well, why is this? Where from? is this coming from? Where's that coming from? And there's also the past life stuff that we could get into and all of that. But really looking at like, okay, well, that was a piece of like, my foundation that's a significant piece and so it's looking at okay well where, how do where when i see that come up when i go like oh i'm feeling abandoned oh but really nobody has abandoned me so like what's that what's that piece coming up and not to fall into victim of like oh i'm so i'm so wounded you know not falling into that but going like i see it and that as an adult going like that's bullshit like that's bullshit not like it was bullshit for that one for the for the infant that but you're that's looking both, out into your yes. into your real world scenario of today of the present moment yes. which is really all we ever have and saying is that true right now yeah is no. that true no it's not no. true so In where and i have everything yes. that people are here nobody's abandoned yes so what do i need to do to change my vibration now what do i need to do to to move through this or whatever it is so yes oh. why your personality says I'm sorry all the time. Your personality? Do you say you're sorry all the time? Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And on the opposite side, to, to put it <laughs> to put it very well, she does say she's sorry all the time. And I never say I'm sorry. Beep, we're like, beep, we're, beep, <laughs> beep, <laughs> beep. I try to throw myself under okay. the bus. You me. don't. You don't say you're sorry. And if you say me. if you say if you say you're sorry, I go like, ah, you're just saying. Well, I so you don't have to have this conversation anymore. I make the statement of if I'm saying I'm sorry, it's bullshit. That it's probably bullshit. Yeah. But I probably don't mean it because I I got trained early on to say I'm sorry, even though I wasn't sorry. So my programming was just say you're sorry and just be done with it because it doesn't much matter. You don't really have to be sorry. The I'm sorry will solve all the problems and that will make them happy and let's go along. <laughs> I grew up as an only child. <laughs> I'm sure you can't tell that. And I had a very smothering mother. A very, very smothering mother. So I grew up with a direct opposite program. Which is funny because I hope my mother never watches this. <laughs> but we both have grew up with very extremely smothering very mothers. mothers. But how the how the personality that is innate to has yes we build our personalities but also that personality that comes out from the very beginning can take something completely to two different wounding right. places yes yes because our mothers actually have a lot in common 
Yes. I mean, if you looked at our mothers, you'd be like, wow, they have all So I go, like, I'm sorry because, like, I'm sorry I did something wrong, and I don't want – I want to get you off my – not – I don't, I don't <laughs> want to get you off my back, but, like, if I just say I'm sorry, we can move through this, and you're not going to hate me versus you – if I, if, if you go, it's like, very rare. <laughs> it is, it rare. is very rare it's that rare. you say you're sorry. I, I'm trying it to get is. better at authentic. I'm sorry. Yes. Because I want my sorry to be authentic. I just haven't come up with a lot of authentic. Cat is I'm liking our, 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 <laughs> our claws coming out. <laughs> but that is your, you, you've said like, that's my, my, myself, like my, I know it's, my that was the same the same kind of a similar scenario and yet you took it a different way mm -hmm. and so it's just recognizing like you recognizing where yours is coming from and me recognizing where I mine also had from. The, the mother who never would let me be wrong at anything like I could do I walked on water I really could with my mom I and I still today she will look me in the face and she always has through life even if she disagrees with me 150%, she will agree with me. So that sends up a whole nother, like, my my inner child thinks that it can do no wrong. Uh -huh. And I have to actually parent myself more consistently. My, no, that really was, like, that's, you shouldn't do that. That's not okay. That's, that's not this. That's not that. Because my inner child believes that she can walk on water, mm -hmm. which is great in some in areas. certain ways. <laughs> it is. It's looking at our strengths too. So like looking at your inner child isn't all like we hit on the play aspects, but it is looking at like the benefits of something like that for you, because then you can go like, you have certainty. You go, you go like, I, I can't do anything. always have certainty though. So as a child, I had the complete reverse of that because I was so fearful of falling into the water basically in that you know that because I have been put on this pedestal of I could do no wrong that I it hurts when you fall I was consistently scared so I was the wallflower mm -hmm. I, I opted to just not put myself out there at all because guess what you can't fall if you're not out there mm -hmm. and I knew that from a very young yes. age so I was just like if I never if I never put myself out there then there's no risk mm -hmm. and then I had to retrain myself away from that risk aversion to being okay with risk, but then that inner child came out like, you can do that thing. <laughs> and that's good, but then there's the bad side of it too. Yeah. So. And so it is looking at like the good aspects of, of, every of single. that and then, and using those, using yes. those pieces to your benefit to push you forward. And then also recognizing the pieces that might not Play out in the most beautiful and, and lovely ways in our in our lives and our relationships. Yeah. And then step again, stepping into the the play, the fun. The I have a thing like I love children's books because I think they're playful. They get our they get a. Sometimes we make things as adults way way too serious, too com serious and too complicated. complicated. I'm sorry, but if you don't can't it's explain it to factor. a five year old, then you then you just don't understand. It's a kiss factor. Yeah, keep, keep it simple. simple. So yeah, I think I can walk on water. I just can't swim. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, I think it 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 is looking at your inner child. So, what would you suggest, or I can suggest suggest for for, for people like really learning to kind of step into their inner child and. I always come back to the same teachings no matter what. It's because it's the inside game. It's a game of awareness. Being aware, being conscious. I mean, hopefully, if nothing else, what you've got is that, number one, neither one of us is perfect, even though I think I am. No. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. I don't really think I'm perfect. I know I'm perfect. No. <laughs> no. And here's her inner playful try. No, but being aware of that, that both of us have done the work that yes. we, I mean, what we keep bringing up is that we see our shit. Yes. We see it and it's, we may not always catch it in the moment. It might take us a half an hour or even a day or two, yeah. but we're constantly looking, looking back 
to the point that we said at the beginning that before we even started this live today that something that she said made my you know cause a reaction to me and then that reaction to me I, I decided to vocalize it because I was like hmm, this is a noticing that I'm having and that reaction triggered her inner child again so we were triggering this inner child stuff going on and that but what we were doing in that was that we weren't fighting about anything we no, weren't, we weren't even mad about. about anything it was this awareness for both of us so we were going through this like well, that makes me aware of this and that, that I've been, and I was saying to her, saying, you know, like, yeah. I've, I've become more aware of this because I'm now noticing because this has happened most, multiple times. So is this an awareness game? And that right there, I think, is to me the biggest, yeah, the, the biggest thing. Sharing but not blaming. Not sharing going, you did blaming. this. It's not, right, because it, it's often not anybody's fault. Yeah. If you take responsibility for what you're feeling, in any situation, then you can look at it from this, what I refer to as the witness perspective. And looking at it from that and kind of going, to, looking at it from God's perspective almost, because you're looking at down at the scenario and go, well, I, I experienced that and re, I reacted like that, okay? That's not that how I from? wanted yeah. to react. That's where did that come from? Where are these feelings coming from? There's, this isn't, there's not a reason for it in this moment. I know mm -hmm. that that's bullshit for this moment. Yes. but being aware of what you're feeling, actually st stating it to self or sometimes to somebody else yeah. that, you know, like this is, this is what that brought up inside of me and just being able to have in that time a mature conversation with self or other so that you can just move through it. Yeah. Right? Without your ego. If you're not aware to it, you cannot tap into, you can't heal the wound and you can't tap into the beauty of, of that aspect of yourself so that you can learn how to walk on water, right? It's like there's good and bad to, to every single scenario of, of, our, of our inner child. And I think I would suggest, I mean, same, pretty much very similar. I'm right on with everything you just said. Uh, I know, I'm always right. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're wrong. You are wrong on all of that. No. Uh, if you notice yourself getting caught in in a pattern of like say abandonment or you you're noticing you're 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 biting someone's head off off and it's always a similar situation like i used to suggest people do even like a journaling and going like okay well where did this show up in my childhood like where not again not dropping into complete victimhood but literally just taking like a little time and like going like where where is this coming from where has this stem from where am I developing this from and thinking outside of just the last, you know, adult period of time because a lot of our, our patterns get pretty ingrained early on. And then and then doing the work. Under the age of seven. That's yeah. where the majority of it comes from. So, so yeah. Uh, this is what I have learned also. If you are the only person in a situation who practices self-awareness, you learn to steer others to become aware too. Yes. Or those people will just or they'll be away. away from you. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It'll either sever the relationship or awareness seeds will will be ignited for sure. Yes. Well, I, I mean I think that that kind of I think we got it. Yeah. yeah. So thank you all for comments and likes and everything that's kind of popped up. Um, we really appreciate it. Please like, share. Definitely share. Hit the little share button. The way Facebook operates is that if if a show like this is shared, then Facebook says, oh, that's valuable. People want to see it. And if we get more, sh the more shares, then the more Facebook actually supports us. And that puts it out there. And that, that really helps us just keep doing these every couple of weeks yeah. and sharing content to everybody out there and, and also being able to have good conversations. So share button is the most valuable thing yes. that you can give back. Yes, to. yes, yes. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, please check out, we both have stuff going on, some of the same stuff. So check out both our websites, www.addisonbell.net and www.kendallwilliams.com. And we will see you in a few weeks for another free spirit talk. Bye, guys. I think I can shut up. See if she had the little. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>